Good morning. Bonjour. My name is Colette Ouellette, and I'm President of Infection Prevention and Control Canada, otherwise known as IPAC Canada. With me today is Susan Rodenizer, Suzanne Rodenizer from a previous President of IPAC Canada, and Sandy Peterson, who is the current President of our Ottawa Chapter. The leadership of Infection Prevention and Control Canada is on Parliament Hill today calling for the federal government to take meaningful action to be ready for the next pandemic. Specifically, IPAC Canada is calling on the federal government to make strategic direct investments in supplies, personnel and resources to infection prevention and control to improve Canada's pandemic preparedness. Without significant action and consistent investment in infection prevention and control, Canada will not be fully prepared for the next crisis and pandemic. The consensus view of all the experts in infection prevention and control is that the federal government must act now to save future lives and future disruptions to society. These are investments, not expenses. The leadership of IPAC Canada also urges federal officials to rely on the expertise of infection control professionals, or ICPs, as the government builds capacity to respond to future outbreaks. It's critical that ICPs be consulted so these investments are both sustainable and effective. In Canada, ICPs are highly educated professionals from a variety of scientific and medical backgrounds who work in healthcare and academic institutions. ICPs play a critical role in minimizing the spread of infectious disease in all kinds of settings, including hospitals, schools and long-term care homes, as well as dental settings and even prisons, among others. I will now address the profession's serious concerns related to combating antimicrobial resistant organisms, or AMRs. IPAC Canada is urging the federal government to enhance investment in antimicrobial resistance measures and research to improve surveillance of infectious diseases and support a proactive approach to prevention and control. In June 2023, the federal government released a pan-Canadian action plan on AMR, yet AMR remains a major global public health threat and is continuing to expand in Canada. Increasingly, drug-resistant microbes pose a threat to humans and animals and are making infectious diseases harder or impossible to treat. The compounding effects of AMR increases the risks of Canadians developing infections that are difficult to treat and we're seeing more severe illness and deaths that previously could have been prevented with effective antibiotics. This creates additional burden on Canada's healthcare system as well. It's also noteworthy that AMR poses a risk to Canada's domestic food supplies as virulent microorganisms have the potential to infect livestock livestock and ultimately crops. Before we take questions, some information to put our expertise into context. IPAC Canada is a not-for-profit, multidisciplinary, professional organization for those engaged in the prevention and control of infection across the healthcare continuum. IPAC Canada's membership includes over 2,100 ICPs with expertise in a variety of fields, from frontline workers and administrators to educators and researchers. IPAC Canada provides members access to a wealth of evidence-based resources, education and networking opportunities. Our members are partners in local, provincial and federal forums and our goal is to advance infection prevention and control and create a world without preventable infections. In closing, IPAC Canada is calling for urgent, strategic, direct investments in supplies, personnel and resources dedicated to infection prevention and control to improve Canada's preparedness for pandemics and to combat antimicrobial resistance. Thank you. I now open the floor to questions.
questions of the panel. Laura, if you want to take the first four minutes. Thank you very much. Yes. I think um, going a little off script, it's important that we all understand the threat that we're facing, particularly with antimicrobial resistance, and the fact that Canada is not prepared for another threat from pandemic infection. Our antibiotics are endangered. We're seeing infections now that can't be treated. Number of people who have prosthetics from hip replacements and knee replacements that get infected, many end up losing those prosthetics due to infection that can't be treated. And we're on a journey, and the journey is going in the wrong direction. More and more bacteria and fungus are becoming resistant to the antibiotics we're using. Stewardship is critical to maintain those that we have available now. But more importantly, research to find new antibiotics is the only thing that will keep us from realizing a world as we did in 1939, where antibiotics simply didn't exist. I'll turn over to Suzanne for any comments that she may have. Thank you. Thanks, Colette. And I probably uh, suffice to say what Colette has expressed uh, very eloquently is is the state of the the world right now, and um, we do need urgent action uh, and sustainable investment for uh, any progress to be made and for us to be prepared uh, going forward. Thank you, and I'll leave uh, some last words to Sandy for her comments as well. Hello, uh, just saying that um, we appreciate the opportunity to get this message across and that we hope that some action will be taken um, to prevent, uh, like Colette said, uh, a time <laughs> where antibiotics are not available to treat any uh, infectious disease. Thanks. Okay, thank you for your attention.